Hi everyone, you've been waiting for this last lab for a long time and it's finally ready for you. In this lab, you're going to pop a high privileged shell, finally. And for doing so, you're going to have to patch your own process token with a system token. Okay, let's get started. For this lab, most of the code is the same as the previous lab. We are really close to finishing the exploit actually, which feels nice. And so in this lab, we actually have the solution for the previous lab, which means it contains the code to build the code mode enlistment that allows us to patch our recovery threads previous mode to zero and then call the nt read virtual memory and nt write virtual memory functions from userland to confirm we have kernel arbitrary read write primitive. And so we provide code to find the e-process structure associated with the system process, assuming we have a pointer to any e-process structure. This code is basically going to go over all the processes by walking the list until it finds the system process. And it is the process that contains a high privilege token we want to steal and also use for our own exploit process. And finally, we provide code to spawn a shell, assuming we have administrator privileges. So assuming we patch our own process token to be the same as the system process, we should be able to spawn uh, NT authority system shell in New Zealand. So most of the files in the lab are exactly the same as the previous lab, but we introduce a new file called prevesc.c, which basically contains the code to inject the good mode enlistment and the code to walk the linked list of e-process to find the system process. So the goal of this lab is to actually spawn a shell with system privileges. And to do so, we are going to swap our exploit e-process token to hold the system token instead. And so there is this god mode system token swap function that we need to modify. And so we are going to use our arbitrary read write primitive in the kernel. And so first we're going to use our arbitrary read primitive to read multiple structures. And then we can use our arbitrary write primitive to update some of the stru structure fields. We kind of know a case thread address because we leaked it for the recovery thread as part of the initial kernel leak. And so we can deduce the e-process address holding that thread because the process structure has a linked list of all of its threads. And then we can work the linked list of e-process by calling a helper function that we provide and that is called find e-process code mode prim. And this function allows us to get the system e-process address. And so from the system e-process structure, we can just get the pointer to the associated token. And then we can just use that token pointer to override our own token inside our e-process for our exploit. I guess it's worth noting that for real world exploits, we should actually increase the pointer count in the object header that is in memory before the actual token structure. And this is to avoid any crash if the token structure is freed at some point. For instance, when we exit the exploit several times after multiple runs, since, since each run will actually decrease the ref count of the original system token. And so if we run the exploit several times, the ref count might end up reaching zero at some point, which we don't want because the system e-process would still hold a stale reference to that token and the system would crash if the kernel accessed that legitimate token through the system process. And finally, we can use our kernel arbitrary read write primitive to actually restore our recovery thread previous mode to one since we don't need to actually modify the kernel anymore. Obviously, once we have restored our previous mode to one, we won't be able to check if this particular write worked, but it doesn't matter. Well, actually, there is one way we could actually confirm it worked, which is that we shouldn't be able to read any kernel memory anymore. 
And so finally, we provide a helper function called try admin shell, which allows us to spawn a shell. And so we should get like system privileges into a new cnb.exe, which you can confirm using the who am I command in the spawn shell. You can use the offsets we provide in the global postvar structure, which stands for pointer operating system variables. And similarly to before, we have the recovery thread case thread address in pxvar, which stands for pointer export variables. And the reason we like to have this global structure is it allows us to support different operating system versions quite easily. And so this slide is just to show a successful run of the exploit that you should be able to see once you have implemented the, the last few steps. You can see that running who am I shows that we are anti-authority system. So let's have a look at the code for this particular lab. We know we have the privest.c and that contains helper functions and we have the privilege escalation.c which contains the code for for the entry point of, of this lab so just looking at the privilege.c uh, there is a code mod confirm which is basically the function used to read and write the kernel memory just to confirm we have arbitrary read write so this is basically just uh, retrieving the first keyword of the k resource manager structure and then overwriting it with dead beef before uh, we actually read it back. There is this init god mode enlistment, which is basically creating the fake god mode enlistment in New Zealand in order to um, override previous mode. So yeah, building the adjusted write address based on previous mode thread lock and adjusting it so so we can pass the spin lock and, and override the full 64 bit after um, the lower bit um, is actually switch from zero to one. And then we have the file eProcess God mode prim uh, function, which allows us to, from a given eProcess, it's gonna go through the linked list of eProcess in order to find the, the one that has system bridges. It does it by looking at the system PID because we know it's gonna be four. As you can see, we provide wanted PID as an argument. So we're going to ask that we need the system PID. And so we, we make sure we, we save the one that corresponds to the system process. Okay. And so going to privilege escalation.c, um, we can go from the entry points. So really the code is really very similar. We have the, the main function that we call you know, to do the trying to win the race condition. All the code is very similar. It's just that once we win the race condition, we're going to basically want to see in the recovery thread what we do. So basically, init recovery thread calls this recover thread function, which we know calls this function in order to call the vulnerable function. And once it's returned, it means we managed to escape the vulnerable loop. So we're going to basically have to call code mode confirm, which is the new helper function from privilege.c that I've just described. That's going to confirm that we have actually read write in the, into the kernel. And finally, we need to call code mode system token swap in order to um, swap our eProcess token with the actual system token. And I'm going to show this function in a minute because we need to modify this function. But then after that, we're going to basically be able to call try admin shell, which is going to allow us to uh, spawn a shell with um, with system privileges. So yeah, let's look at the god mode system token swap function. This is the function we need to modify. So you have instructions on what you you need to do but basically yeah, finding our eProcess uh, based on the recovery thread case thread then calling this find eProcess god mode prim you can just uncomment this and then uh, finding the system token inside the eProcess structure and, and you can also optionally patch the system token to have a higher ref count and finally you can patch into your own eProcess so it holds the new token and we provide code already to restore previous mode to, to one. Okay, now it's your turn.